On behalf of the family, I want to just extend a heartfelt gesture of gratitude for everybody's love and support that they've just poured out uh, to the family during this time. We're here today to, to remember, to honor, knowing Trevor a little bit, probably some laughter as we remember his life. Trevor Joshua Gutierrez, age 28 of Conyers, passed on Tuesday, the March, sec March the 2nd of 2021. He is survived by his wife, Carly Gutierrez, and son, Carson. Parents, Gabriel and Crystal Gutierrez, brother, Cole Gutierrez, niece, Grayson Gutierrez, sister, Mary Gutierrez, Crystal Adams, grandmother, Martha Gutierrez, grandmother, as well as many aunts and uncles. Trevor attended Rockdale County High School and graduated in 2011. He was a public store manager of Madison Yards. He loved many things, his family, aggravating them, golf, bowling, and pool. Trevor was big and lived big, and he loved big. And I think it's evidence that he loved big by the show of support here and yesterday. Would you pray with me as we enter into this time? Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and grace. God, you are good, you're gracious, you're merciful, you're loving. God, we thank you that, Lord, those things we saw exhibited in Trevor's life, God, your attributes as he knew you and the Spirit of God dwelt in him. Father, we pray today that, God, you would be honored as we remember one of your sons. God, we bless you, we honor you, we magnify you. Holy Spirit, we pray you continue to comfort this family, God, this church body, his co-workers, Lord, all of those, his friends that loved him and knew him so well. Father, we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Light in the darkness, my God, that is 
First Conyers are going to speak about some of those things that we saw in Trevor and some of those experiences we had with Trevor. And I am Trevor's children's minister. My name is Vicki. And um, Trevor came to First Conyers when he was five, and I wasn't five. And um, I, have a, I have a visual in my mind, as I was speaking with Carly and Crystal the other day, I have this visual in my mind. We were over in the old church over on Main Street, and they had redone the fellowship hall, and so the preschool space was down there, and there was a, there was a welcome desk for the preschool. And I remember walking in, and Crystal standing there, and little Trevor, not as little as some five-year-olds are, but little Trevor and Cole were there for our preschool ministry and I remember seeing them and meeting them and that's my very first recollection of Trevor and Crystal and Cole and at that time their family was not attending church anywhere they were looking for a church but they hadn't found a place yet um, but Trevor attended Conyers daycare and we had an arrangement with Conyers daycare that they if parents signed their kids up would bring their kids to vacation Bible school so Crystal signed Trevor up, and Trevor came to Vacation Bible School as a five-year-old. And what Crystal learned pretty quickly was that Trevor loved Vacation Bible School. And every day that she would pick him up from daycare, he was super excited about what he'd done that day. He was super excited about what he'd learned that day. He was super excited about the people that were teaching him and loving on him. And then that Sunday, they were going to sing a song at church. And so he wanted Crystal and Gabby to come and hear him sing that song he was, that was so important to him. And so Crystal came to hear Trevor because Trevor invited her. At the same time, there were other people here that Crystal found out she knew. And they began to plant seeds in Crystal's life about who Jesus was and, and how he loved her. And she began to be responsive to that. And Crystal made a choice to be a follower of Jesus Again, all because Trevor invited her, and it changed their family tree. Soon after that, or at that same time, it was time for parent-child dedication. Parent-child dedication is just a time in our church where a parent makes a commitment to raise their child in a godly home. It's not about the child. The child can't make that decision. But it's about the parent making that decision that they want to raise their child in a godly home. And so when we presented that to Crystal, she said yes. Well, normally that was for babies, two-year-old and under, but Trevor was five. And so she wanted to make that commitment for Trevor, too. And so one of the things that they would have to do is choose a life verse for their child. And Crystal found Trevor's baby dedication Bible this morning, and it has his life verse in it. And his life verse is Matthew 6, verses 31 to 33. And it says, So don't worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Crystal talked to me the other day and said the reason that she chose that verse was because Trevor worried about everything. 
He wanted to know about everything and what was going to happen and what was next, and he wanted to know all the details about everything that was going on. She also said that he was nosy. And in that nosiness, as Crystal and Gabrielle were communicating in Spanish, he couldn't quite get what they were talking about, and that was totally against Trevor. And so he learned Spanish really, really quickly, so he wasn't missing out on what Crystal and Gabby were talking about. Crystal told me that even in those years, and I remember this, his personality was so big. And even when he was young, he was so tender-hearted. And she began to plant into him this idea, and I bet you'll recognize this whether you've known him as an adult or whether you've known him as a teenager. Whenever you knew Trevor, you would recognize this. Crystal would say to him, you are bigger than everybody else, so God gave you your size to take care of the little ones. Go sit with the lonely kids, ask kids what they need, get them things if they can't reach it. And I was thinking about that and thinking, I wonder if that was the beginning of the public seed in his mind. Not sure about that. Trevor loved church, and he wanted to be here no matter what was going on. No matter what was happening, he wanted to be here, and he wanted to make sure that Coley was here too. And so, even if Crystal was sick, and they began to think, the boys began to think that they weren't going to church that day because mom was sick, Trevor would say, I'll call my Sunday school teacher. He said they would come and get me. I'll call somebody, and they'll come and get me because he wanted to be here so badly. In all the ways that Trevor was involved here as a child, he learned some really important things and he heard some really important truths. Trevor began to hear about who he was, who Jesus was, what Jesus offered him, and what he needed to do about that offer. And so at the end of another VBS, a couple of years later, that all began to make sense and to jive in Trevor's mind and in his heart. And Trevor made the choice to be a follower of Jesus. In a few minutes, we're going to talk about more what that means. But that's a really important thing for you to remember, that Trevor made a choice to be a follower of Jesus. He was baptized when he was 11. By the way, salvation doesn't come through baptism. Baptism is an outside picture of what's already happened in the heart. And he was baptized as an 11-year-old, but the reason it took so long, because he was waiting on Coley. He wanted to make sure that Cole had come to that place in his life also, where he had put his faith and trust in Jesus, so that they could be baptized together. And they were. Now, you probably know this, but just in case you don't, let me just remind you that Trevor wasn't perfect. He, ooh, nanny. He was a guy, though, who absolutely was positive that because of that choice he had made to follow Jesus, that his sin was forgiven, that Jesus was making him new, and he was promised a place in heaven. I could tell you some stories about that imperfection, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just honor him. But Trevor knew, though, that even in that, his sins were forgiven. Jesus was making him new, and he had a place secured for him in heaven. Now, honestly, none of us would have wanted Trevor to be experiencing that place in heaven as a 28-year-old. I was talking to Crystal and Carly the other day and, and talking about children's ministry and those years with kids in children's ministry all these years, and when you're with them, you never think, oh, well, they are only going to have 28 years. We're only, they're going to only have... 17 years. You don't think that. You just think they'll be old, they'll grow old. And so we would have never wanted Trevor to be gone now. But remember, Trevor knew that his sins were forgiven. He knew that Jesus was making him new, and he knew he had a place secured in heaven. So because of that, we don't grieve here today as those who have no hope. Because we're full of hope. Because Trevor knew for sure 
that he was going to heaven when he died. But he wouldn't want it to stop there. He would want you to know that for sure, too. My name is Rusty Couch. Trevor, I think, referred to me as Couch for most of the time that we knew each other. It was my privilege to be Trevor's junior high pastor here at First Baptist Church of Conyers. I want you to know as I stand here today that I uh, am brokenhearted. As Vicki said, nobody would have expected Trevor to have 28 years on this earth and I will indeed miss him terribly. All of us will. But I want to spend the next few moments talking about stuff that's mostly lighthearted because just as Vicki said, I have a blessed hope that one day I'll be reunited with Trevor in eternity thanks to our mutual faith in Jesus Christ. And if I were the guest of honor at today's funeral and Trevor were up here speaking, I have no doubt that he would have shown me no mercy. <laughs> so with that in mind, I first met Trevor in the spring of 2005 when Miss Vicki invited me to do an overnight retreat with the rising seventh graders. As I was talking to Vicki and looking over the list of the kids, I remember asking her specifically, tell me about this cat, Trevor. Miss Vicki got the biggest smile on her face. She said, Rusty, you're really going to like him. He's got a big personality. And how true that turned out to be on both counts. During my years at First Baptist Conyers, the guys of our student ministry were a card-playing bunch of guys. We played cards on the bus, on the way to places. We played cards when we got to places, wherever we were going. We played cards on mission trips, summer camps, winter camps, choir tours, everywhere and anywhere. It was not uncommon for me to have six or eight guys at my house for all night card games. Well, Trevor heard about these card games and he wanted in, big time. And from the day he got into junior high ministry, he began to bug me. Couch, teach me to play spades. Now, I would admit this trepidatiously, but uh, of course, being a pastor, I'm not the most patient teacher in the world. And, and I really don't particularly enjoy teaching people to play games, so I began to put off Trevor. But he was so persistent, and finally after about three months, I made a deal with him. I said, Trevor, if you will stop asking me to teach you to play spades, I promise you this year at winter camp, I will teach you to play spades. And he agreed. Well, a few weeks later on the day that we were to leave for camp, he arrived with a very sullen look on his face. Apparently he had gotten into some trouble on the way to church. Crystal came to me and said, we almost turned around. But uh, I'm not sure Trevor's going to be getting on the bus today to go to camp. I said, oh, come on, Chris. She goes, well, he just, he needs to be punished. I said, well, if you'll let him on the bus, I'll beat him like a yard dog when we get to camp. And I'll be really mean to him for a couple of days. That ought to be punishment enough, right? Well, uh, Crystal rolled her eyes and thankfully she relented. When we got on the bus, as soon as the door closed... Trevor came right back to my seat. He goes, that was close, couch. I almost didn't get to learn to play spades. I said, buddy, you realize that we are going to, to camp to do more than play spades, right? Oh, oh yeah, 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 we're going to learn about God and all, but I want to learn to play spades. Can we start now? Well, he was a quick study. 
In fact, two or three days into the camp, Trevor knew most there was to know about spades, and he wanted pastor, he wanted to know all the nuances, you know, how to do nil and blind nil and 10 for 200 and all these things. And so one day uh, at the camp, uh, myself and Rich Bowie and Rick Dupree uh, were enjoying, uh, and it must have been somebody else there too, because you had to have four, but we were enjoying an adult game of spades on the other side of the camp. And there was probably two or three football fields difference between where we were and where Trevor was. And we were in the upstairs of this, we used to stay at some of the shankiest places because they were cheap, right? And uh, this whole building would shake uh, when a small person would walk up the stairs, okay? Well, here's, you know, 6'3", 230 pound, you know, seventh grade Trevor Gutierrez. And all of a sudden the, the building began to shake and I heard this boom, 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 boom. And the door flung open. And there stands an out of breath Trevor with a, with a notebook in his hand. He says, look couch, I just went 10 for 200. I said, that's great buddy. And he turned around to walk out and I'll never forget Holly Rich looked at me and said, I hope he doesn't go home and tell his parents that's all he learned to do on this trip. <laughs> You know, as I've reflected on Trevor's life these past few days, I'm drawn to a cliche of sorts. Live, laugh, and love. Now, if somebody goes and grabs a piece of wood off a scrap heap and paints those three words on it and takes it to Hobby Lobby, they'll sell it to you for $40, right? But Trevor did all of those in overdrive. Go big or go home. I must have heard him say it hundreds of times. Trevor truly knew the ins and outs of living, of laughing, and loving. He squeezed more out of 28 years of life than many people do in seven or eight decades. Trevor never hesitated to upsize his combo. He always ordered his Zaxby's wings extra wet with at least two and sometimes three extra ranch dressings. Trevor was a man after my own heart. One time at Red Lobster, it must have been a Monday, a shrimp Monday, uh, when Trevor finished eating his shrimp scampi, and I knew then that Trevor and I were just literally blood brothers. When he finished his shrimp scampi, he dumped the remaining butter onto his mashed potatoes and broccoli. He drove nice cars and he took care of his stuff. Trevor knew how to live. I have enjoyed many a belly laugh, thanks to Trevor. He didn't mind saying whatever was on his mind, and depending on how feisty he was feeling, most of the time he said it loud enough to be heard. I can't tell you the times I've wanted to crawl under the table or crawl under the bowling ball dispenser because Trevor would make a comment about someone close enough and say it loudly enough for them to hear it. For almost three years, without failure, every Sunday night, Trevor and I would go bowling here in Conyers. They had a special Sunday night deal. You pay 10 bucks and you could bowl for three hours. And let me tell you, we bowled all three hours. It was nothing for us to bowl 10, sometimes 15 games a night. Sometimes on Mondays I couldn't write, my arm was so sore. And of those 10 to 15 games, Trevor won about 80% of them. But it was still so much fun. And I'll never forget one night we were beside Elaine and there was a lady and she had the gloves and she had the shoes and she had all the fancy stuff. And uh, you ever watch Fred Flintstone bowl? You know, he goes up and goes, goes around, around. Well, this lady went through all of these manifestations, okay? And, of course, Trevor and I always recognized uh, lame uh, courtesy. So you don't bowl when the person beside you is about to bowl. And so we both stood there, and she did all these nuances or whatever, and she bowled and knocked down three pins. Well, Trevor was not happy about that, and he looked at me, and he looked at her, and she looked at him, and he said, all that for so little. <laughs> at uh, the final 
premarital counseling session that uh, Trevor and Carly and I had, we decided to go out and celebrate. And again, it must have been a Monday night because guess where we went? <laughs> no more calls. We have a winner. And we must have had a rookie waiter, and he was struggling badly. And 30 minutes into the meal, uh, or 30 minutes into sitting at the table, our salads were delivered. And about 10 minutes later, the waiter returned to the table and looked at Trevor and said, how are you enjoying that salad? And I'll never forget, Trevor says, why don't you bring me a fork and I'll tell you. <laughs> Trevor knew how to laugh, Trevor knew how to live, and Trevor knew how to love. I am honored to count myself among the people who were loved by Trevor. He was a genuinely caring person. Now, this COVID pandemic has caused a lot of inconveniences, not the least of which has, uh, it has caused a shortage in my recreational drug of choice, caffeine-free Coke Zero. I found a 12-pack the other night on Amazon for $63. I'm not that desperate yet. But on the morning of January the 30th, I got desperate enough to send a text to Trevor. I said, look, do you have any of these sitting in the back of a stock room somewhere? What, you know, I, I've got to have this. And Trevor said, oh, hey, Couch, what's up? I said, well, I'm doing okay. I've had some major life changes lately, but tell me about this Coke Zero. And he wrote back, he goes, life changes? Hmm, okay. And it was obvious that we weren't gonna get past that. And so I shared a little bit about what was going on. He goes, dude, we need to get together. I said, all right, let's do it. He said, how about tonight? I said, okay. And in about 10 minutes, he had arranged with Carly, and uh, we had dinner on the night of January the 30th, Saturday, January the 30th, here in Conyers at Longhorn Steakhouse. And one of the things that I loved the most about Trevor was how much he loved his family. Cole, I know stuff about you that you have no idea I know. <laughs> Macy, you're laughing. I know a lot about you too. Crystal, Gabrielle, oh, I've never known a man love his mom and daddy as much as he loved you. And we talked about you guys much, over and over. Patrick, we talked about you that night. I asked Carly, I said, how's your brother doing? I've forgotten his name, but we had a great time at your rehearsal dinner. But anyhow, I say that to say, when we got ready to leave, we walked out, it was cold, and I hugged Trevor and I told him I loved him. And it's for that reason that I have no regrets because last Sunday evening, Trevor and I had a dinner date. And I got busy in my yard, and about 5 or 4.30 or so, Trevor texted me and said, Couch, are we eating tonight? And I said, oh, man, I, I'm sorry, I've got busy in my, y'all probably looked at the message, you know I didn't say, oh, man, but nevertheless, that's neither here nor there. And I said, I'm so sorry. He said, that's okay, we'll, hook, we'll link up again soon. Now, I wish like anything, of course, I had went to dinner with Trevor, but not because I had something to say to him, or not because it was something that was hanging over our heads because I know Trevor loved me and I loved him. And the last text he ever sent me was, we'll link up soon. And buddy, I know that, uh, I'm not sure about the theology of the great cloud of witnesses, but if you are in the great cloud of witnesses right now and you're watching, you better believe we'll link up soon. And you better save me a place, the heavenly card table. Seals and Croft had a hit song in 1973 entitled, We May Never Pass This Way. Trevor was one of a kind. There will never be another Trevor. We may never pass this way again, but he leaves a huge impact on this world, and all of us could probably be better off if we were more like him. So upsize your combo more often. Dump your scampi butter onto your baked potato. Laugh at somebody who needs laughing at and say I love you more often. Live, laugh, and love.
There's a lot of stories that Rusty shared, and there's some stories that I will not share about Trevor. Um, I was Trevor's student pastor, and one of the things I know about Trevor is that uh, we push the limits a lot here. And um, I wish I could say that last Tuesday, when I got the text message from Sean about what had happened, that I, my faith was rock solid, and that I prayed some prayer, and that I was went out and walked on water. But the fact is, just like many of you, and just like his family, when I heard the news, I was like, no. No, this can't be. There's no way. Not Trevor. No God. I started informing God, telling God that this couldn't happen. This couldn't be. He was young. He was strong. He was crazy. He'd only been married for a short time. He has a young child. I started telling and informing God, and I was bothered, confused, and hurt, and in pain, and just like many of you are, and have been, and will continue to be. And for those of you who have, who have questions and doubts, let me tell you, I understand. I don't know why. I don't know why. We will never know why, this side of eternity, why things like this happen. The Bible does say that God's ways are are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And if we were able to explain why God does things or why God allows things to happen, we would, he would cease to be God. So Tuesday afternoon when I get a, a text from Sean, she said that um, Crystal wanted me to speak at the service. I didn't know what to say. I remember telling my wife, I don't even know what to say. I said the same thing to God. I, I, I don't know what to say. What do you say in the midst of tragedy? What do you say to the friends and the family and the people here to bring hope and peace when something like this happens? And sometimes I don't know, I don't like what God tells me to say. And sometimes I, I don't say it. And sometimes I do. And I feel like God wants me to say this today. Romans 8, 28 says this. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. And I didn't like that verse at first because I didn't want to share that. I, don't, I didn't want to talk about that today. How, how can you take something bad and turn it into good, God? I don't want to talk about that. There are a lot of things that we all did or did not know about Trevor, but there are two things that I do know about Trevor, that he was called according to his purpose, and he was loved by God, and he loved God. I watched Trevor follow Jesus as a student, I watched him in the student ministry. I watched him graduate. I watched him walk across this stage. And um, I watched Trevor interact with students. He always had uh, the ability to make sure others felt welcome. He was the kind of guy that others wanted to hang out with. He was the kind of guy that I wanted to spend more time with. There are many memories that I have of Trevor. Like I said, I'm not going to share all of them. But I, I treated him more like a brother than a student because he was that kind of guy. As I watched Trevor go from being a student in high school to a young career-minded adult, what I loved most about him was how passionate he was about everything he did. If you knew Trevor, he always gave 110%. Whether it was kicking butt in basketball, whether it was playing ultimate frisbee or just hanging out with students or starting his career at Publix and then starting a family, he always gave it all. He always gave it all. His passion was so attractive that it didn't matter what your background was or what your aspirations were to be or what you, your plan was, that when he talked about certain things, I, I remember um, Trevor talking, I got to be a part of Trevor's life when he first started his career at Publix. And I remember him talking about, about Publix and uh, on one of the many trips he took, we took with the student ministry, I remember him, um, he spent the whole entire bus ride telling all the students where everything was at Publix. So they'd ask me, what aisle is this on? Well, it's on this aisle. And I also remember how with no reservation, he would talk to anybody. And uh, he put others first. And he was always willing to help me no matter what I needed. I remember on that same bus ride, um, this is where I treated him a little bit more like a, a brother. He had to go to the bathroom so bad. And we were so close. And I, was, I had to make a time had to make it in time back to the church. And I said, 
The next exit, I promise we'll stop. And then we passed the next exit. He ran up to the front of the bus. He was like, I gotta go, I gotta go. I'm like, the next exit. And then we passed the next exit. And I remember when we finally got to the church, <laughs> I kind of felt bad. But he ran in here, went to the restroom, came back, and he was ready to beat me up. But, <laughs> oh. And I remember another trip where we went on a, a camping trip and I gave him a backpack to take and I, I thought that maybe he would pack some things that a camping trip would need, like, you know, um, maybe some lighters or some fire, you know, matches or things like that. He packed all clothes. The only thing he packed was clothes. I think two or three outfits for every single day we were going to be camping, where all the other students, all the other guys, um, I think took one pair of clothes and they were, it was on their body. It got me thinking about how Trevor was with all the, all the students, all the people he was around, and it got me thinking about 2,000 years ago, Jesus stepped into our world, into a much more barbaric and more, much more harsh world than, than we know today, and Jesus began to say things and do things and stand up for those who the world threw away. He gave value to the invaluable and would talk to the outcast, just like Trevor would do. Jesus was so life-changing, he was so passionate about everything he believed, he was the king of kings, that he was able to get a group of men to come alongside him and follow him. And I think about Trevor, how passionate he was about everything he did. And I look out and I see all the people here, and I never would have thought that that 17-year-old, 18-year-old boy would have such an impact on the people that he has in the short time he's been here. And I thought about the disciples. They spent their whole lives, they were committed to Jesus, they were committed to following him, they spent every moment with him. And just when they thought their journey was beginning, just when they thought their journey was beginning, one of the most tragic things happened to Jesus. Friday happened. And Friday represents how fragile life is. The disciples saw Jesus overcome many obstacles and perform incredible miracles. And then on that Friday, he was hung on the cross. Their faith on that Friday was fragile. Everything seemed to fall apart. None of us a week ago planned to be here today. None of us planned on having to deal with a tragedy like this. And some of you, like me, might be stuck in Friday. And like the disciples were asking God, why would you let something like this happen? Why would you let the cross take place? Or how could you let someone we love so much go through such a horrible, tragic thing and wind up on the cross? And I, I'm going to tell you this. Everybody, everybody has questions on Friday. Everybody has questions on Friday. And they thought to themselves, how could we get through this? And then Saturday comes, and Saturday in the gospel story, we don't, it's not a lot of talk t talked about on Saturday, but I do know this. On Saturday, it seemed like the, the, from the world's point of view, that God was silent, that he was quiet. And it, it, was, it was as if God didn't say anything on that Saturday. And so for so many of us, we might be in that Saturday stage. And we feel like we're alone or lost because someone we love is not here. But I want to tell you this, just because God is silent does not mean he's absent. And there might be days where we feel like God is silent, but he is not absent. And there will be days where we feel that way. But the cross is proof that when we think God has lost control, he's still in control. For many of us, after we leave here today, our lives might be get back to somewhat of a normalcy, or maybe it'll never be normal again. And we might feel like God is silent, but he is there. And so we have the, fragil the fragility of Friday and the silence of Saturday. But what makes Christianity so incredible is that we have the celebration of Sunday. At the tomb of Jesus, there's a sign that says he is not here. He is risen. And because of the cross and because of the love and the sacrifice Jesus made for us, and you'll hear more about that later, that he paid the price so that you and I could be reconciled to Christ, to God through Christ. And what made Trevor's life so special is that he had a relationship with Jesus. And he changed his life. 
And somehow he's going to turn this tragedy into a celebration. And as painful as the cross is, and as painful as it was, and as painful as this is, the cross always ends in celebration. Because Trevor trusted Jesus, I know that when Trevor took his last breath here, he took his first breath with Jesus, and he saw his face. He's celebrating with Jesus today. I don't know why God chose to take him. Maybe he needed someone to run heaven's public branch. Um, Maybe God just wanted him to hang out with. And some of us might be tempted to say to the family, God will never give you more than you can handle. But I don't, I don't believe that's true. I, I believe that God wants you to depend on him and to lean into him. And maybe for some of us, we're on that fence and we're trying to make decisions or we're not sure about who God is. And, but I believe he wants us to lean in. There might be days where we feel like it's Friday again, where it's just as fresh as it was the day we heard about it. There might be days where Saturday comes and it feels silent. We don't know what to say. We don't feel like God's talking to us and he's not there, but he's there. But I want you to remember that Sunday is coming. The celebration of life is coming. And from God's and Trevor's point of view today, this is not a funeral. It's a celebration of life, of a person's life who, quite frankly, is more alive than all of us in this room is today. Because he gets to see and spend time with his Savior. Thanks again for being here today to celebrate and remember Trevor's life and the impact that he's had on each and every one of us all in different and unique ways. I know it means more to the family than you guys will ever know, not only to be present here today, but throughout their lives in the weeks and months and years to come. This is one of those things you never wanna do, but you have to do, and I'm honored to be part of it. If you don't know me, not that it matters, but I'm Jeff Riley and I'm the small groups and um, young adults pastor here at First Conyers. Um, I've been around Trevor and his family for many, many years here at First Conyers, and I really got to start knowing Trevor um, when I was the game guy in Iwana, and he would come on Wednesday nights, and if you know Trevor, he loved games. He and Emily Ammons had a great rivalry going on in those days, Um, but There's nothing quite like watching somebody compete and seeing how they win and how they lose to really get to know somebody. And that's exactly what I got to do while Trevor was in there um, at game time. Um, Trevor wasn't going to win any races, but if he was in a game, he was in it to win it. He was going to give it his all. And I have to tell you the truth. He was a terrible winner and even a worse loser. But he was a master smack talker. Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah. So before the game and during the game and after the game, he would dish it out. If he lost, he had an excuse. And if he won, you would never, ever forget it. So it was no surprise to me that as I got reacquainted with him again in these recent years, that that about him hadn't changed even a little bit. Trevor and Carly started coming to um, the young married small group, and Trevor could normally be here on Sunday mornings because he usually had to work on Sundays. But... Who knows that if there was a party going on, Trevor was going to do everything he could to make sure he was there. So they started coming and joining our uh, young married gatherings on other nights of the week, Fridays or Saturdays, if he did not have to work. Um, And two of his passions came together, food and competition. That, That was his stuff right there. Um, 
And, and so whatever game was being played, man, like I said before, he was in it to win it. Um, he was never going to let you beat him. And he was going to trash talk you the whole time. And it didn't matter if it was a board game. It didn't matter if it was cornhole. It didn't matter if it was ping pong. He, even the white elephant gift exchange, okay? That's what I'm talking about. Trevor was competing. You know this Trevor, right? Yeah. So the last time I saw him in person, he was actually leaving the house that night, going home from one of those young married gatherings and talking about taking off work to make sure he was there the next time to p get a bet paid off that one of the other guys in the group had lost to him, right? And a couple weeks ago, our last Facebook interaction was about that exact same thing. Franklin, I know you're here. He was coming for you. <laughs> Trevor loved to have fun. He was the life of the party with his big personality and his great sense of humor. It was hard not to smile even if he was beating you and talking trash. His mom and wife may disagree, but that's how I saw it anyway. He was a people person. And not only did he love to be around people, but people loved to be around him. Part of the way that you knew that he loved you is if he was teasing you or picking on you, right? Um, Cole and Macy, I'm sure you guys have had more than your fair share of that. But thinking about him being a people person and how much people loved him as I stood at the hospital on Tuesday and continued to see people pour in. And as I stood here yesterday and continued to see people pour in. And as I stand in front of you today and see how many of you are out there that's just more confirmation of that. But even though he was big, tough, and strong, he had an even bigger heart. He'd help you however he could, and he did never want to make a big deal about it. He didn't do it for the attention. He did it because he loved you. Trevor was real. He was genuine. And not only was he a great friend, but he was a family man. He wanted to be the best father husband, son, brother, and uncle that he could be. He wanted to be the favorite, yes, partly so he could rub it in your face, and partly because that's just what winning looked like, but mostly because that's just who Trevor was. And to prove it, he spent his last night with his family for Cole's birthday, hanging out for hours. I know they had a great time together. And because of who he was, you wanted to help him. And evidence of that came in Trevor's last day. That's exactly how he spent it with his pops, helping him, because he loved him so much. He was also a hard worker, and he wanted to be the best manager that could be. He probably would never tell you this, but if you haven't already seen it, there's um, a table in here with all the awards that he won um, being a manager at Publix. When he had his mind made up about something, that was it. You probably weren't going to change his mind. And you might call it hard-headed. You might call it stubborn. But today I'm going to choose to call it determined. He decided when he was in high school that he was going to have his own public store. And sure enough, he made it happen. But when I think about some of Trevor's characteristics, it makes me think about Jesus. And you might say, wow, I never thought about Jesus when I thought about Trevor, but stick with me. They definitely had some things in common here. Maybe not the trash talk, but Jesus did get the Pharisees pretty good a couple of times. But Jesus loved fun too. He was always with the people. He was always at the parties. He loved people well, and he served them as a built-in part of his life. 
and people loved him, as evidenced by the crowds following him everywhere and him being invited to dinner in people's homes and for weddings. Jesus was also a good son, and he was a good example for his siblings, even though they may have been aggravated with him from time to time. And he wouldn't let anything keep him from accomplishing his goals. You guys seeing what I'm seeing? John 10.10 says that Jesus came to give us life to the full. Or some translations say abundant life. And that's exactly how Trevor lived his. Trevor went big and Trevor got to go home. We could learn some things from that, I think. When things like this happen, we don't understand. We ask questions, most of which we don't get answers for. But we can be certain of this, that God can and will bring good from this tragedy. But we have a choice to make about how we are going to respond. We can allow ourselves to get bitter and miss out on God's best for us. Or we can choose to learn from Trevor's example and allow God to transform us and continue to make us better and more like him. As I close, I have one last thought for you today. I've been reading through the book of Deuteronomy lately. And if you're not familiar, it's an Old Testament book that it's leading God's people up into taking possession of the promised land. Moses was the leader that God appointed over his people. And he was with them for 40 years as they wandered through the desert, right up until they were on the doorstep of the best that God had for them. But Moses missed out. Moses got to climb the mountain across the Jordan and look at it from the other side. But he wasn't able to enter it and enjoy it with the rest of Israel. Moses died on that mountain that day. How sad is that? So close, but yet so far away. Moses missed out on what God had for him on the other side because he failed to trust him on this one. I'm going to say that again for you in case you didn't catch it. Moses missed out on what God had for him on the other side because he failed to trust him on this one. There's a really big difference between seeing something and knowing it's there and being able to actually end up there. And even more sad than Moses missing out on what God had for him would be if you missed out on what God had for you, the best he had for you because you failed to trust him on this side. Trevor didn't miss it, and I hope you won't either. Carly, Carson, Crystal, Gabe, Cole, Macy, we love you guys. We're praying for you, and we're with you. And Trevor, I'm looking forward to seeing you again on the other side. At this time, if there's anyone who would like to say anything, tell a story, to honor Trevor, I would welcome you to come up to the podium so that you could share. Where do I even start? This is by far the hardest thing I've ever had to write or speak on, so bear with me. My name is Jeremy, but a lot of you know me as Wormy. I met Trevor for the first time when we were sixth grade at Conyers Middle School, and we've been boys ever since. He was my dog. Every time we talked on the phone, it was big dog, 
what are we getting into today? We're big dog. We should do this. He was full of life and energy. There was never a dull moment around him or having a bad day. He would say something that would just turn your day around. He was the guy in our friends group that I always looked up to. He was the first one to get his license, first one to get a job. He just seemed to always have it figured out. From ninth grade, he knew he wanted to work at Publix and grow within the company. He worked 30 hours a week while being in high school. His drive and determination was one thing that I always admired. He may not have worked the hardest in school, but when it came to Publix, he was determined. There was no playing around for him at work. He was so smart. He was the guy in class that would sleep the entire time, and then come time to take the test, he would ace it. He gave all our teachers all that they could handle. I even think they got frustrated with how well he always did on tests because they could, they could get onto him all they want, but he was still ended up passing all the tests. I cannot count on the amount of times he would get kicked out of class. At RCA, there was a glass window beside the door that teachers would make him sit at when he got kicked out. He would go out there and still find ways to make us laugh. I couldn't even look at him most of the time because it was hard for me not to laugh and get myself in trouble. If we played spades together in class, we would always have a secret signal to let the other one know we had a specific card. We were both extremely competitive. People hated playing Trevor and I in anything. We weren't the best of sports if we won, and the trash talking just got worse. Uh, if some, somehow we lost, uh, I think one of you said that we had an excuse. Whether it was you know, dark outside and we couldn't see the, you know, the goal anymore or, or something, we would come up with it. He was so great at trash talking. That man always had to come back to whoever he was arguing with. He knew how to push people's buttons, to say the least. One thing is specific that Trevor did back in high school that come to think of it now, it's not so funny, but we you know with us just being young, it was funny at the time. If he was driving a car, you know, we came to a four-way stop sign about the same time another car, you know, he would wave his hand, you know, to the other car, and as soon as they went to take off, he would speed up right in front of them. He just made me laugh. I mean, I was laughing in the passenger seat, hysterical, and just hiding my face, hoping it was someone we didn't know. Another thing he did that would just make people laugh was, or mad, was going down a single lane road. He would put his flashers on and go like 10 miles an hour to make the line of cars behind him extremely long. He loved to hear the people blow the horn and try to pass them. Every day when we got out of school and he didn't have to work, we would either go back to my house to play basketball or go to the mall. We would play basketball at my house until it got dark. And come to think of it, the amount of snacks and drinks my parents had to have at the house at all times was insane. <laughs> Trevor, Dakota, Chris, Tyler, Ryan, Travis, me. I mean, we would all be at the house when my parents would come home from work. I always know they enjoyed having a house full of the guys, and those memories are ones that we'll never forget. The number of hours we spent together bowling, playing basketball, shooting pool, seems like we were never apart. Trevor went with me, my brother, Briar, and Bottle down to Panama City with us for one of our softball tournaments. It was us five guys and my brother's Toyota Tacoma. So it was a tight ride with three grown men in the back seat. Of course, Trevor had shotguns, so we decided to put a movie on to try and kill some time. With him being in the front seat, he couldn't see the DVD player. Well, him and Briar, who decided, you know, they should switch seats. Well, as you all know, Trevor was a big boy at 6'6". Six, six. He decides to sit in the middle of the back seat. That was by far one of the most uncomfortable rides I have ever been a part of. That same weekend, we won like nine or 10 games on Saturday. And as we were leaving the ballpark, Trevor and our coach decided to just take their shirts off in the middle of the park while walking out, blaring music on the speaker we had. Between that weekend alone, the amount of laughter and fun we had all together is indescribable. Another memory that I'll never forget is the time we played co-ed softball together. 
he was in the outfield one game, and he had a ball hit, hit to him in the air. As the ball was in the air, Trevor was kind of spinning around trying to get the trajectory, trajectory of the ball. Well, instead of him sticking his glove in the air to catch it, catch it, he decides to just barehand it. I mean, when that happened, he had everyone laughing, and I was just in disbelief. From then on out, he always said he never needed a glove to play softball. If I asked him to play in a one-pitch tournament, he would say, I'm only going to bring my bat because I don't need a glove. You know, we were getting older when Trevor would always call me when he bought a new tool at Lowe's or Home Depot. He was proud of the amount of tools he was racking up and how well they all looked hung up so nice and neat in his garage. The last time I saw Trevor was about two weeks ago. Me and my fiance Vanessa met up with Trevor and Carly for lunch. I had asked him to stand up there beside me on our wedding day as one of my groomsmen. Of course, knowing Trevor, he was more excited about wanting to go to Vegas for the bachelor party. <laughs> After we ate lunch, we went to Home Depot because he needed to buy a nail gun. As we were walking around, I found a tool chest that I really liked. I'm standing there just looking at it and just couldn't gather myself to spend the amount of money on it, so I just walked away. He then tells Vanessa just to buy it for me. Without even getting a yes, he wheels it on up to the front of the store, points at Vanessa, and tells the lady at the register she was buying it. <laughs> Needless to say, Vanessa ended up buying it, and I think he was more excited than I was. He even offered to put it in the back of his truck and bring it to my house for me. As we just got it unloaded and into my garage, he immediately started taking tools out of my cabinet so he would organize the new tool chest. Where are all my, can I get a raise of hand for all the Publix people? You'll, you'll probably like this next part. He always expressed WSO to me, <laughs> which I believe is something that he learned at Publix. I believe it means workspace organization. He was literally rearranging everything, so I, got out of, so I got the most out of each acquired space. It makes my heart hurt knowing that we never got to experience Vegas together. We had talked about going to Vegas ever since we were in high school, so I just wanted to say that I'm sorry. The memories that I have of our time together, I'll always cherish for the rest of my life. I miss him so much and just cannot believe my big dog is gone. I know he is watching down on all of us right now. Knowing him, he is probably making some type of joke on me right now. The amount of lives he impacted is unreal. He could go into a room not knowing anyone and find a way to leave his mark. Trevor had a huge heart. If my dad were sick, he would constantly call me to check on him to see how he was doing. He would come visit him if he was in the hospital. He just always asked how family and friends were doing and if there was anything he could do to help. One thing I always loved about Trevor was how much he loved his family. The bond between him and his brother Cole just reminded me so much of me and my brother Craig. His love for his mother Crystal, his father Gabby, Nanny, his baby sister Macy, his wife Carly, and his beautiful son, Carson, was unmatched. That young boy is a spitting image of Trevor. Cole, I hope you know that Trevor was extremely proud of you. Anytime he got promoted, he would call me to let me know and love tell me things about you in general. Macy, he was so proud of you as well. He always told me how smart you were and how well you were always doing in school. He was always worried about you having a boyfriend. <laughs> Gabby, Crystal, Nanny, the job you did in raising Trevor just speaks volume on the type of people you all are. Gabby, he knew how to fix anything because of you. He always loved working on projects with you. Carly, the amount of love Trevor had for you and Carson is unimaginable. I hope you all know that I'm always here for all of you. I love you all and consider you all family. Until next time, Big Trev.
My name is Holly Bowie. My husband is coach or rich. Um, his job took him out of town. He was unable to make it to where he could be here. So I have something I'm going to read on his behalf. Um, but like many of you, when I got that call on Tuesday, the only thing I knew to do was go to the feet of Jesus to get that peace that I needed and the understanding. And so I would just tell y'all, just rest in the, just at the feet and the presence of Jesus. Um, my husband and I served in youth ministry here at First Congress for 17 years. So there were many, as you can imagine, that have come through this program. Some of them sitting here today that are adults now, which is crazy because still I'm only 29, right, Craig? Um, but Trevor was special. He was one that we knew from the beginning. And we knew of him even before he got to youth ministry. We were aware of Trevor, the ones coming up, right? Um, but there was something special about him. And the one thing was the public's family, like I know y'all know this, but he loved that job. His aspirations, everybody here that knew him knew he was going to have his own store one day. We did um, Dave Ramsey financial piece, and he was in my small group when we did that. And, you know, that deep voice, Miss Holly, how he just would say it. He showed me, like, how he was going to make money and how, this is it, him as 18, right? He was a senior. I was trying to remember how old he was. Um, an 18-year-old. Here's, here's how I'm going to make a million dollars, and I'm going to do it. He had a plan for his life. He was always that way. He's left a huge void with all of us. Um, but he did. He lived big. He loved big. He was very proud of his family. I know one thing was, I think it was two years ago now, now COVID time, you know, we're all disoriented, but when we played ball together and I was excited that I was on his team, like, yes, okay, good, yes. You know, I'm a little competitive myself, you know, but um, watching him as a man, because just seeing him in the different phases of his life, but then watching him as a man and how he was to you, playing and protective in who he was. Um, it was an honor. My husband yesterday, when he was leaving to go back out of town, hugged me and said, be strong. So I'm gonna do my best to, to get through this. Um, he titled it The First. Trevor was the first of three children for Christian Gabriel. My prayers for all of you at this time is for his friends, family, Carly and Carson, is to be drawn closer to God. The first time I realized that Trevor was different and special was on a church trip. While the older kids were saying what they wanted to do or be when they grow up, Trevor stated with confidence that he wanted to be a public store manager. Now understand me, he was only in the ninth or 10th grade when he was saying this. We used to ask him, in which y'all have heard this before, but we used to ask him where certain items were located inside the public store as a game. Like, where are the green beans? He would say the aisle number, which side, how far down, and on which shelf. Knew exactly. And again, with confidence. He was serious about his future. Trevor was the first to protect the underdog person. I saw many kids at first be afraid of Trevor, but it wouldn't take long before they realized that Trevor was their friend and protector. There are many more first for me with Trevor. At the end of the basketball season, I took the team to CC's Pizza to reward them for all their hard work. The manager cut me a deal. If they brought in two cans of food, he would drop the price for me because he wanted to support the church and what we were doing with these kids. And all you can eat pizza party with 10 teenage boys. Can you imagine? Full disclosure, my favorite four words, all you can eat. The guys came up with a competition of who could eat the most pizza. Trevor would leave the crust, the pizza bone, so he could keep a better count of the slices and show how many he had eaten, which was more than 20 slices. Several other kids were tapping out after 15 slices. Oh yeah, he still had room for ice cream cups and ice cream sandwiches, plural. The restaurant never knew what hit them that day. 
Because Trevor usually acted up on Wednesday night, Rusty would ask Trevor to start us off with a little prayer. This one is an attempt to get Trevor settled down and start the night. Trevor always had a meaningful prayer for the group and for others. His prayers were different than most seventh and eighth graders, while also being and doing this in front of high school seniors. He showed again that he was different and special. Trevor was the, Trevor was the first kid to bug adults, so true, about changing a planned schedule of events. Sometimes his suggestions were taken and things turned out better for the group. He was always thinking ahead and planning. Trevor was the first kid to go down to the gym after Wednesday night church, moving people, chairs, tables, and basketball goals to get ready for practice. I wouldn't let him in the storage closet to get basketballs until the gym was cleared out. He was always the first one clearing out and then the first one right behind me as I opened up the storage room to be the first one to get a ball. He would take it and throw it a long shot to the hoop. Then he would find his favorite ball and run to the under end of the court. Trevor was the first and only kid that I carried out of the gym with a twisted ankle to his mother's waiting car. Trevor was the first person I called Big Ugly. Everybody knew, remember that. Everybody knew who I was talking about when I said this. It was a name that stuck and was a special name between me and him. His brother Cole came into the youth group and started filling Trevor's shoes at church, saying prayers, getting in trouble, all that. Later, soft-spoken, quiet, shy Macy came into the youth group. But when the music starts, she transforms. Two more good kids that Crystal and Gabe brought to the church. I would see Trevor at big church. That's what we call, y'all, yeah, 11 o'clock, yes, big church. I would see Trevor at big church, sitting with his grandmother and family, and after church I would walk up and ask him how things were going. He would tell me of his last promotion, what he was trying for the next inside the public's master plan, always looking for the store manager position. I remember seeing Trevor in the church parking lot getting out of his gray car, tucking in his shirt, fixing his tie, and then reaching in the back seat and pulling out a diaper bag. I walked over and he said, this is my wife, Carly. She and I started small talk, mostly about Big Ugly. Sorry, uh, I never liked that name, just so y'all know, but they loved it. Um, and the things we have done in the past here at the church. Trevor leaned over into the car and pulled out a baby car seat wrapped in a bundle of blankets and uncovered a small, cute little sleeping face of a baby boy. Both mom and dad were glowing, smiling ear to ear. I could see in their eyes that this child was very much loved. I could see in Trevor's eyes he really loved Carl and Carson. We talked that morning in the parking lot about his next plan to buy a house. We walked into church like so many times before. I went to the youth area, he went to the nursery. That's the last time we talked. I wish I had another first. Trevor was a first at many things in my life. I hope and pray that you know that the Bowies loved you. Many of the people here know that you were one of a kind, the kind of person people really wanted to be around. And he had this thing that he would tell, and if any of y'all had him in basketball, you know what I'm about to say. Hit my white square, Coach Rich.
He was more than a friend. That was my brother. For those who doesn't know me, I'm TJ. I was Cole's best friend um, throughout school. I'll never forget the first night Cole said, we're gonna hang out with my brother tonight. And I knew that first night that Trevor was meant to be in my life. When I met Trevor, I was a boy. I didn't know anything. I was working part-time. And Trevor said, why don't you come work for Publix? And for those who doesn't know, Publix is more than a job to us. Publix is not a nine to five that we clock in and out of. Publix is a way of life. You can ask for any one of the Publix people that I see out here that Publix just means more to us than you would ever know. Trevor hired me. He taught me everything I know. I owe Trevor a debt that I'll never be able to pay. Carly, I love you. I know how much Trevor loved you. I just hope one day that's something I get to have. I get to look at a wife the way he looked at you. Mama and Papa, everyone said it. Y'all did an unbelievable job. Cole, Macy, he was a big brother that we could never ask for. We were so blessed just to get to call him our brother. I mean, you look to your left, you look to your right, and the, all the people that Trevor has just touched. I mean, I think we all have to be envy of that. I mean, Trevor has There's nothing Trevor didn't get to do in his life. There's nothing Trevor didn't, he has everything. He had everything he wanted. And I'm envious of that. Um, as a family, I just want to let everyone know, I'm um, starting the next year, the first Saturday in March. We're gonna hold, we'll pretty much just call it almost a field day for adults. Kids too, but um, we're going to play cards, play basketball, um, cornhole, all the way to dominoes. We'll have tables set up. Um, we'll have jumpers for the kids. Um, and for the first Saturday in March, to here going forward, oh, we'll eat too because you know Trevor. He always had to have a nice plate with him. Um, we'll have more information about that um, on Facebook for for sure everyone's close to someone on, has a friend on Facebook in the family, we'll have more going on that. I know we'll have shirts going out that are already being made for this year that we'll have a contest for next year. Whoever takes the, a picture in the like, coolest place in their shirts, um, we'll have a little reward and we'll just keep going for years on forward and going through that. But all I can say is Trevor, big dog. We thank you, we love you. I know for me, I, I will never be the same without you. You were the first person I called for every promotion, for every raise, for everything. You're my big brother. Just real quick, a funny story. Jonathan, I don't know if you remember when you gave me my first evaluation and I, I didn't know anything. And Jonathan gave my first evaluation. This is like Trevor just left our store. And Jonathan's going down my list and giving me five, six. And I kept thinking like every score Jonathan gave me was the best score that I was like, oh man, I got a five, that's awesome. Like, that's awesome. He, he got a six, okay. And I called Trevor, I said, yeah, Jonathan's giving my evaluation. And Trevor said, how'd it go? And I said, oh, I went good, I got fives and sixes. And he said, fives and sixes? And he said, send me a picture of your evaluation. So I sent him a picture of my evaluation. Then he hangs up on me. And he calls Jonathan. 
And I get back and Jonathan's waiting for me. He's like, big dog, what happened? Trevor just called and ripped me. I thought you liked your evaluation. And all I know is, Trevor, I'm so thankful for you. I love you so much. I hope we all can just make you proud in your honor, everything you did. And I love you so much. Thank you. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Macy Gutierrez, and I am Trevor's sister. Um, I knew that I wanted to speak today because I was his only little sister, and <laughs> Trevor, even though he was my big brother, um, he kind of thought he was my dad in a lot of things. He loved to tell me what to do, where to go with my life, and he was even more strict than my own dad when it came to guys, as you guys have heard a lot about that today, but um, I think honestly, one of the last conversations that we had, he came up to me, didn't even say hey, he just said, <laughs> so, so I heard you've been texting a guy, and I go, yeah, for homework, and the first thing he would always say, they know I have a gun, right? <laughs> they know. <laughs> that I'm 6'6", six, six, and that I will, and he just started making all these threats, and that's one of the things I loved about him, even though I just hated it, and you couldn't talk about that. But um, that is the big brother that he was to me. Um, and another thing I wanted to say, I guess a backstory, I do have a letter from Trevor that I wanted to read, um, but... I don't know if many of you guys know this, but I am a type 1 diabetic, and I feel like, um, I feel like, I guess one of the reasons <laughs> why Wormy and Travis and all of his other friends got to grow so close was because when I was first diagnosed, we went through a little phase, and I don't think he was too excited about the gluten-free pretzels or the low-carb snacks, so I'm sorry <laughs> that he came to y'all's house and ate all y'all's food. That's my fault, um, but I'm just glad that he got close to y'all um, for that. But um, every year I would go to this thing called Camp Kudzu. It was a um, camp for diabetics, and um, I, I, uh, my mom started this thing where they would write me letters every time I went because it was like, what, six days, seven, or something like that. Um, and I, I would get homesick, but... Um, he never fought. My mom, he would always write me a letter every year. And so I have that letter right here. And it'll just, I guess, this is Trevor right here. Um, Dear Macy, I hope you are having a great trip. Me and mom are having one ourselves. Just want to let you know that your brother Trevor is very proud of you. And that I wouldn't ask for another sister. Now, while you are there, make sure you stay away from all the boys. They have cooties. And make sure you make a lot of friends. I can't wait to see you when you get back, and maybe we can have a brother-sister day again. Ha ha. But until then, have fun, and we will see you later. I love you, Macy Lou, your favorite brother, treasure. Um... So yeah, that just kind of tells you, I guess, the brother that he was to me. He was very protective of me, and I love him with all of my heart. And I, I know that I will see him again one day, and I hated how much he aggravated me, but there's nothing that I wouldn't give to have him pick on me one more time. Um, yeah, and thank you all for being here. I know that he is, I know that he loved all of us, and um,
Hello. My name is Amanda Barber. I've been in Trevor's life since the day he was born. And I just want Crystal and his family and his friends to know what you already do, what an amazing person he is, and how grateful I am that he invited his mother to church because of that seed. He has grown so many branches. Through Crystal, I have been saved. Through me, my family's been saved. Many, many people. If Trevor would not have invited his mother that day, what a difference it could have made. So if Trevor seed that day has impacted your life, could you raise your hand? And it's gonna be growing much further. So I hope that you're not ever afraid to invite somebody because it can make a difference. Thank you. Just like a lot of people, last week, I didn't believe it. It crushed me so much. It tore me apart. I didn't want to talk to anybody because I couldn't believe it. And I spent days going through pictures, going through text messages, days trying to reflect it all. But it's real. There's so many memories that I have with Trevor, I don't know where to start. But I try to look at the good things, because I will tell you this. Trevor was very underrated with the fact of being super funny. Trevor was hilarious. And anybody would know that. There are sometimes Trevor would do stuff, and I'm like, you are dumb. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> For real. So I'm going to try to share a couple memories that I definitely remember. So, Trevor is very competitive, and I was competitive too, but there was one thing that I had to step above in Trevor, and that was basketball, without Wormy. <laughs> See, like, we used to play two-on-two -two plenty of times. I met Trevor, I met Trevor in, in middle school, actually. Cole and my little brother were best friends. So, that's, we started meshing, and then high school, after that, we really started growing a bond. So, we used to play basketball. When he didn't have Wormy on his team, when it was just me, him, and Cole, but like me and him, Trevor was the type of guy that you would look at and think that he would try to be closer to the basket. Trevor wanted to be far away from the basket and shoot the basketball. And when he got close, Trevor couldn't keep his balance. He didn't have the feet, work, the footwork that you would think. So I used to pull a move on Trevor. I used to contact Trevor and pull the chair on Trevor and what that means is I will move out the way. Trevor would touch me and I will move out the way. All of that force and all of that weight, Trevor will fall on the ground. It worked every single time, every time. And Cole said, you have to teach me that move. Cole knew it. Cole said, you got Cause one thing about him, man, there was always an excuse if he lost, but that guy there was, he would not stop. Trevor wanted to be great at every single thing. And another memory, so. In high school, I'll never forget. Like Wormy said, Trevor was so smart. He would sit in the back of the class and talk and play all day, all day. His superlative was class clown. Trevor won it easily, unanimous, <laughs> unanimous. The teacher told Trevor that at this point, they've kicked him out numerous times. Trevor was no longer afraid of ISS. Trevor was no longer afraid of anything. He knew that. Trevor said, 
I, Trevor was in the back talking. The teacher looked at Trevor and said, Trevor, you're not going to basically tell him he wasn't going to be successful. That was the wrong thing that he can tell somebody that worked at public supermarket. <laughs> Boy. Trevor looked at the teacher and said, one day I'm going to be a store manager and I'm going to make more money than you. <laughs> I kid y'all not. <laughs> he was so bold, so creative. And he always wanted to live big. He did. And that, that there, I commend him for. And there, like I said, the timeline goes on. On and on and on. As far as memories of things that we have shared, and I've had memories with people that are in this room. This one here cut me deep. So anybody that's willing to come up here and honor this man, take the strength to come up here, because I kid y'all not, it took a lot for me to come here and deal with this right now. It's hard. But again, we are all here to be strong together. And that's what we must do. Trevor lived a great life in a short span of time, and maybe his work was done, but there was not a single moment when he first met Carly, how happy he was to be a husband of Carly. And the times when I would go over his house, and it's me, him, and Carson, and how happy he was to be a father to Carson. So, everybody just try to maintain, and I'm saying that for the strength of myself, and that's it. Hi. Sorry. Hi, my name is Kaylee, and I worked with Trevor for about a year. One thing I could say about him was he instilled something in me that nobody has ever even thought to instill in me. He put drive in me. When I was going through things at home, I would just sit in his office and cry. He would say, Kaylee, it's going to be okay. Stop crying. You're going to get through it. He was more of a big brother to me than a store manager. He talked me through so many things, and he believed in me. <sighs> he believed in me, and that's something that a lot of people didn't do. He told me that, Caitlin, you're going to make it. You're going to be a store manager, and you're going to be like me. This one really hit deep because I, there's nobody that could replace him. He was the best. Thank you. Hi. I'm Trevor's nanny. And I'll never forget the stormy Friday evening he was born. It was, it, it was hot and humid, thunder and lightning. I was standing at the head of the bed holding Crystal's hands. When he was born, he looked like Papa Smurf. He was red and blue. <laughs> he was, he was red and blue. And he always called him my baby boy because he was my firstborn. <clears throat> so I kept him, because I was doing commercial cleaning, I kept him for Crystal while she was working at Chick-fil-A for, until he was about three years old, so. He was my baby. And then I went to work for public first, so I blazed the trail. And so when he turned 16, he said, Nanny, he said, can you get me a job at Publix? I said, yeah, buddy, I think I can do that for you. So I, I called Esther Santilli and asked her, I said, Esther, I said, will you talk to my grandson about coming to work for you? She said, yeah, Cheryl, I'll do that. So she hired him. The rest is history. But uh, he, he touched a lot of lives. And he gave me a wonderful memory. And he loved deep and he loved hard. And 
I know where he is, and I know he'll be there when I get there. And I'll take care of his son and help raise him the best I can. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. And I love that boy. I will always love him. And I don't think I'll ever think of him in the past tense. He will always be my boy. Hello, my name is Valerie Addison. I work for Publix, as you can guess. Um, I work in associate relations, which is just fancy for human resources. Um, my department works very closely with store managers, but I did not work any closer than anyone with, than Trevor. We had a inside joke that he would call me around seven or eight every couple nights or so. Um, I said I work for corporate, we stop at 4.30, Trevor. Um, <laughs> he didn't care. Um, <laughs> Trevor was, as we know, so full of life. I didn't mind getting the seven o'clock phone calls. He was so passionate about what he did. He cared for his people and his family and his friends and it was so apparent. I noticed on the table out there his mission statement that he wrote, and one of the lines was, I want to leave a legacy. And if I have learned anything in the last week, he has done that. So on behalf of Publix and our family, and to your family, we are here for whatever you need. That doesn't stop today. He is so loved, and his legacy will shine on. My name is Brenda. I am Chara's cousin. He really did go big, and he went home. <sighs> Even though he was the eldest of the three, he always thought he was the only baby. <laughs> the big baby. He did love parties. It didn't matter if it was for an adult or for children. <laughs> February 6th, he arrived to my home with a snotty nose and probably a body ache or a headache. And he made sure that no matter how he felt, he would spend some time with his family. And so this big baby <laughs> brought a Nerf gun to my home and felt like he was gonna be the leader, he was the leader to all the little children in my home that day. <laughs> and they got hit with many Nerf gun bullets. All of them ended up crying. <laughs> but he was so happy <laughs> because he had beaten them all. <laughs> They were all beat up. He loved 
genuinely. And he reflected everything that was sown in by their parents. I sent a message to my aunt and my uncle, but they have been so much more than that. They have been my guardians, they have been my parents, they have been my role models. And they wanted me to share the text message that I had sent to them, but I sent it in Spanish. <laughs> and I did my very best to translate it. So I'm going to read it in Spanish first, and then I'm going to read my attempted version of it translated. Estos últimos días han sido muy largos, dolorosos y tristes. Pero nuestra familia ha sido testigo de la fidelidad de Dios una vez más, como siempre lo ha prometido, como siempre lo ha hecho. Le doy gracias a Dios por confiar en nuestra familia con este difícil reto y por proveernos con la paz y fortaleza para poder afrontarlo y sobresalir y seguir adelante. Nuestra familia, aún en el lamento, es abrazada por la paz y misericordia de Dios. El apoyo de la comunidad y el amor mostrado, mostrado hacia mi familia es increíblemente asombroso aunque sé que no debería estar asombrada, pues Dios es capaz de lo imaginable, sobrepasando cualquier expectativa. Aunque mi familia no estaba lista para una pérdida y una partida tan rápida y terrible, definitivamente Dios se encargó de que estuviera equipada para aguantar y seguir dando un buen testimonio, pues sabemos con certeza que algún día volveremos a reunirnos con Big Trev. Mis ojos experimentan cómo dos pilares fundamentales de mi familia se mantienen fuerte en tal tormenta y me enseñan cómo Dios ha trabajado en ellos para poder luchar y sobrepasar. Es muy notoria y visible los hermosos frutos que reciben del tal labor de sem sembrado por sus semillitas de amor a lo largo de los años. Gabriel y Cristal. Mis tíos, mis padres, mis hermanos en fe, mi ejemplo. El hermoso ejemplo de ser el vaso usado por Dios con un corazón verdaderamente dispuesto, sin importar la gravedad, perseverando y dando gloria y honra a Dios en todo momento. Mis ojos también han visto como una guerrera se levanta, apretándose de la mano de Dios y encuentra las fuerzas para seguir adelante dando nada más que lo mejor de ella, siempre asegurándose que todos los demás estén bien y tengan todo lo, neces lo necesario. Mi Carly, mi des 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 desinteresada Carly, mi audaz Carly, mi generosa Carly, mi fuerte Carly, Dios le dio la tarea por el momento de que se quedara un poco más y seguir haciendo la diferencia y el ejemplo para nosotros y para Bebé Carson. Es difícil, 
pero no es imposible. Llevar a cabo tal tarea pues tiene prim primeramente la disposición de Dios y una comunidad dispuesta a suplir cualquier necesidad que tenga. Sé que no estamos solos. Tenemos un ejército de hermanos en fe para sostenernos, apoyarnos y ayudarnos a sobrepasar el momento in intercediendo en oración fervientemente y ahogándonos en amor. All right, here's my translated version. <laughs> These last few days have been very long, painful, and sad. But our family has been a witness to God's faithfulness like he has always promised and has always been. I thank him for trusting our family with such a difficult challenge and for providing the strength to face, overcome, and move forward. Even in our loss, our family is surrounded by God's peace and mercy. The love and support from the community has shown, from the community shown towards my family is amazingly mind-blowing. Even though I know I should not be amazed For God is able to accomplish the unimaginable, surpassing any expectation. Although we were not ready for such a soon and terrible parting, God made sure we were definitely equipped to sustain and continue and give a good testimony. For we are certain that one day we will be reunited with Big Trev. My eyes have witnessed two fundament, fundamental family pillars stand strong, teaching and showing me how God has worked in them in order to overcome. The spiritual fruits harvested in these last few days are only the results of the love seeds planted through the years, and they are obvious and visible. Gabriel and Crystal, my auntie, my uncle, my parents, my siblings in Christ, my example. My example on how to be a true vessel ready to be used by God with a willing heart, no matter the severity of the task, always persevering, giving glory and honor to God in everything. My eyes have also witnessed how a warrior finds her strength, gets up, and grip into God's hand, moves forward, giving nothing but the best in her, always making sure everyone else around is okay, and making sure that we have what we need. My sweet Carly, my selfless Carly, my bold Carly, My generous Carly, my strong Carly. God has given her the task to stay with us just a little longer, making the difference and setting the example for all of us and baby Carson. It's difficult, but never impossible for you have God's help and a whole community willing to aid any need. I know we are not alone. We have a whole army of brothers and sisters in faith sustaining, supporting, and helping our family overcome this season, interceding and praying fervently for us and drowning us in love. Thank you. With love, Brenda.
My name's Doug Morrison, and uh, I'm a public associate that had the honor to work for Trevor at Madison Yards. And um, y'all bear with me, this is my second attempt at this. I tried to speak to my team, uh, and I didn't quite make it, but uh, I wanted the family to know this. Uh, you see, my, my son, <clears throat> he passed away last July. And uh, at his service, I looked up, and there was Trevor. And uh, it started a beautiful relationship, much more than a boss. I discovered what a godly man he was, and he uh, stayed by my side all the way through it. When I came back to work, he was always there, always came to check on me. He just had the biggest heart, and uh, was a huge source of strength for me. And I think maybe most of us might have something in their lives that Trevor did that was similar because it all came from his heart. He never expected anything in return for any of the things he did. It just came natural. It just happened. It was just him. And uh, so... Uh, I know the Lord's got his arms wrapped around you, Trevor, but I got you in my heart, buddy. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Um, most of y'all know me. I am Cole, little brother. The... Uh, the burden that Trevor was placed here to take care of. Um, I know I am his one true little brother, but I know that people like TJ, people like Eric, people like Wormy, people like even Jonathan, um, people that are older than Trevor, look up to Trevor. Um, he little bro a lot of us. Um, you know, I, I spent a lot of my life trying to be like Trevor. Like, more than anything, I wanted to be like my brother. I have basketball shorts right now under my dress pants because Trevor started that probably 15 years ago, and, and I haven't let it go. Um, there's so many things, Publix, um, my career cho choices, the kind of car I drive. I drive a Dodge because Trevor drove a Dodge. Um, my love for basketball, I mean, Trevor taught me everything everything that I know. Um, Trevor's such a big part of my identity. I'm not even quite sure how, who, who, how I'm gonna move forward, who I'm gonna be. But I know that he's got his arms around me. I know that he's watching over me and my family. And in his departure, he left me a lot of other big brothers out there to take care of me. People that I, I've, uh, uh, kind of hated growing up. Dakota and Wormy, they weren't always nice to me because Trevor wasn't always nice to me. But, uh, but I know now why, why, they, like, why they pushed me, why they did the things that they did. Um, and, and, I, and I'd give anything to have them here making fun of my, my shacks when I was in the sixth grade. Um, I remember Trevor, Trevor has bought me almost every single pair of my shoes. He's a sneakerhead, if y'all didn't know that. Um, as much as he wears slides, he, he used to love his sneakers. Um, man, I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I know that even Brandon Wiltshire, um, people like us, man, like the people that really bought into Trevor, that he, he changed our lives. TJ was kind of touched on it. Um, Trevor has pushed so many people to be the best version of them that they could be. 
Um, and I pray, I pray, I pray that all of those people don't stop. I know he might not be here whispering in your ear anymore, but, um, but he's still here. And, uh, we, and I, don't, I don't know about everybody else, but this means that I can never let my brother down. I'll never let, I'll never let anything stop me because he never let him, anything stop him. There wasn't nothing that Trevor did that he didn't want to do. And there's nothing that Trevor wanted to do that he didn't do. Um, I want to make sure y'all know, like, my brother did not die. My brother lived. My brother lived 28 years. He did not want for anything. He's the type of guy that he'll call you today and say, I'm thinking about getting a new gun. Tomorrow he's calling you talking about, big dog, guess what I just got? Like, he, that, that's him. Uh, he wanted to go on a cruise, he went. If he wanted to go anywhere in this world, if he wanted to do anything on, on this earth, he did it. And, uh, and, and that's so inspirational to me, and I hope it translates the inspiration to every each and one each and every one of you guys um to my parents papa mama thank you guys <laughs> compose myself thank you guys growing up we we would have called y'all we called y'all everything from slave drivers to just i mean it was nuts man but it all played a part and, and it all played a part to who we are today, and I really appreciate it. Papa, you're the best father anybody could ever ask for. And you didn't have to be to me and Trevor. You didn't have to be our father. You didn't have to choose us, but you did. And you've always taken care of us. You've made sure we, we felt like your sons do anything. And I know, I know you feel sorrow and hurt and anger, but know that me and Trevor thought the world of you. And I've always said, if I could be half the man my dad can be, I'll be better than anybody else around. He loves you, and I loved you. I love you. Um, and I couldn't ask for a be better set of people around me. I really appreciate all the love and support that, uh, that Trevor brought. I mean, yesterday was an amazing sight to see People lined up. I'm talking about, this is a big church. Through the church, out into the parking lot. Um, I watched people stand in line for hours just to be able to give my parents a hug and say that they knew Trevor and that they were proud to know Trevor. Um, and I'm proud to be his little brother. Um, I, I just really appreciate the love and support. I hope that uh, everybody keeps him in, in his mind and in y'all's hearts. Uh, I know he'll forever be in mine. I don't know if I ever stop thinking about him from the everything, playing basketball. I don't know how I'm going to get back in the gym. LA, LA's going to miss my, they're going to take my $35, but they're going to miss me for a while. But uh, I just hope that we can all move on and never forget him, never forget who he was, never forget how he lived. Um, the laughs and the smiles that he brought to each, I mean, I don't think there's one person in here that didn't say, that, 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 that can say that Trevor did not put a smile on y'all's face. Um, there's nobody. Trevor, Trevor had that, that ability to, to make anybody feel great. To, I mean, like, he is the only person in this world who's ever made me cry laughing, ever. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a very emotional guy, I don't cry much, but um, you know, Trevor made me laugh so hard. I, I mean, I'm talking about over nothing, over, over like, I don't know how much I know about Trevor, but he loved poker. I mean, him used to play a little five-card poker, and, uh, and he would say something, just something a little stupid, like, oh, you going to flush me out? And I'd just die laughing. I could not stop, man. That's my brother, and I miss him, and I'll miss him forever. And I can't wait to see him again someday. Um, I know where he's at, and I know where I'll be, and, uh, and I can't wait to see him. I, I know he's got a big dog waiting on me. Um, and one of the crispest daps y'all ever heard. I really appreciate y'all for coming out. And uh, I hope that y'all know that he, he loved each and every one of you guys. Um, Papa, I know he loved you. Mom, I know he loved you. Carly, I ain't even got to tell you, you know. Um, I hope y'all know that Carson, I, don't ever let him, anybody who's in his life, you never let him forget Trevor. Never let him not know who Trevor was. I know I won't. Thank you, guys.
am a very sensitive person. I can't, I can't do it on my own. But, um, I saw Trevi on Monday and that, um, this Saturday I was, well, this past Saturday, I was cleaning my backyard and um, I didn't know I couldn't burn poison ivy. <laughs> and unfortunately, I inhaled the smoke and got in my system, so I broke out all in my body. <laughs> and you know, I, we already knew that we had to go to um, Coley's birthday party. And I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do it? Like, I don't want to contain anybody. I don't know. I had never had poison ivy. So when I got to the party, I told everybody, you know, I just let them know, I have poison ivy. <laughs> don't touch me. So everybody was like, but, you know, Trevi saw me and, and he was one of the only ones that, that didn't care and he hugged me anyway. You know, I know that a lot of people have, he, he loved to hug, so he's a, he's a big guy, so y'all know it's like hugging a big teddy bear. But um, when all of this happened, um, my my auntie, which is my husband's my husband's auntie, I call her that too because she's my auntie now. She sent me a a message saying that she didn't believe in coincidence. So she was scrolling through Facebook, and she's the one that posts. She's that auntie that posts, you know, um, motivational quotes and stuff. But in particular, she saw one that um, she felt like it really spoke out to her. And she felt like she needed to share it with somebody. And she just didn't know who. So as soon as she was done writing it, my mother-in-law called her and she told her that, you know, what happened to Trevor. So, um, she sent it to me and she said, I really believe this is going to help you and your family right now. And I really believe, you know, that God gave me this for y'all. So I translated it because it was in Spanish, so I'm gonna just read it. Ya no llores. Estoy bien. Don't cry anymore. I'm okay. No te preocupes por mí. Do not worry about me. No sufras más por mi ausencia. Don't suffer any longer for my absence. Sabes bien que esta es la ley de la vida. You know well it is the law of life. No culpes a nadie y ni te sientas culpable por nada. Don't blame anybody nor feel guilty for anything. Si no me diste un abrazo cuando tuviste tiempo. If you didn't embrace me when you had the chance. Si no me dijiste cuánto me amabas. Olvídalo. If you didn't express how much you loved me, forget about it. Tu dolor lo dice todo. Your pain says it all. Anda, piensa que estoy bien y sonríe cuando te acuerdes de mí. Remember that I am okay and smile when you think of me. Recuerda las me los mejores momentos que compartimos. Think about the best moments that we shared together. Las veces que reímos juntos, the times that we laughed together. No recuerdes 
como fue mi partida. Don't remember how my departure was. Eso te hace mucho daño. For that causes you much pain. Desangra tu alma y tu corazón. No te tortures más. Faint your heart and your soul. Do not torture yourself any longer. Cuando te sientas solo, alza tu mirada al cielo. When you are feeling lonely, raise your, raise your gaze to the skies. No importa si este día me verás en la nube más que está más cerca. It doesn't matter if it's daylight because you will see me in the nearest cloud. Y si es noche, simplemente búscame en las estrellas. And if, and if it is nighttime, simply look for me in the stars. La que brille más, the one that outshines the rest, there I will be. Ahí estaré viéndote y mi titilar te responderá. And my twilight will respond. My, twi my twingling, my tingling, twingling, twinkling, I'm sorry. Acuérdate que no es un adiós. Remember, it is not a goodbye. Fue simplemente un hasta luego, que solo me fui antes. And it is just a simple see you later because I just left a little sooner. Tomé el tren antes que ustedes. I took the train before all of you. Pero mientras, mantengan viva mi memoria. But in the meanwhile, keep my memory alive. Yo viviré en cada uno de ustedes. And I will live in each and one of you. And that is it. Um, if it wasn't for that day that Trevor didn't invite my auntie to this church, me, my brother, and my sister wouldn't have had been saved in the same church and wouldn't have had been baptized right up there. Thanks to him, my husband was saved. My parents were saved. And hopefully the rest of the family. <laughs> We will miss him so much. Thank you. I know the memories of Trevor, could, we could talk about him for days and days, and, and I, I hate to cut it short, but I, I just think we need to continue to celebrate his life, and I uh, just encourage you to, to reflect on this song.
that he understood, spoke Spanish, and a lot of family members and friends also spoke Spanish or speak Spanish. So um, Crystal also asked my dad to, you know, and, and for us to bring these, these songs in Spanish. And I have translated, tried my best. Some of it doesn't really make sense <laughs> in English. Um, to sort of, so you could sort of understand what we're singing about. Yo he visto el dolor acercarse a mí, causarme heridas, golpearme así, y hasta llegué a preguntarme, ¿dónde estabas tú? He hecho preguntas en mi aflicción, buscando respuestas sin contestación, y hasta dudé por instante de tu compasión. Y aprendí que en la vida todo tiene un sentido, y descubrí que todo obra para Y que al final será mucho mejor lo que vendrá. Es parte de un propósito y todo bien saldrá. Siempre has estado aquí, tu palabra no ha fallado y nunca me has dejado. Descansa mi confianza sobre ti. Yo he estado entre la espada y la pared, rodeado de insomnio sin saber qué hacer, pidiendo a gritos tu intervención. A veces me hablaste de una vez, en otras tu silencio solo escuché. Qué interesante tu forma de responder. Y aprendí que lo que pasa bajo el cielo, conoces tú que todo tiene una razón. Y que al final será mucho mejor lo que vendrá. Es parte de un propósito y todo bien saldrá. Siempre has estado aquí. Tu palabra no ha fallado y nunca me has dejado. Descansa mi confianza sobre ti. Sobre ti. Amen. I'd like to say thank you to the family for the invitation. And uh, we keep praying for you all. And uh, to honor Trevor uh, Gutierrez's life, they asked me to present the message, this message in Spanish. So I'm going to do it in Spanish. It's not going to be too long. But... Uh, enough to for the people to know that um, what the Bible says in John 11 when uh, the friend of Jesus Lazarus died and um, I want to present that uh, in Spanish <clears throat> do gracias a Dios por la familia por la invitación que me dieron estamos con ustedes y honrando la memoria de Trevor 
queremos, uh, me han pedido que uh, presente el mensaje en español y lo hago con mucho gusto. Y en estos momentos, uh, escuchando lo que decían, la vida de él, cómo se preocupaba por las personas, qué es lo que hacía y cómo a través de él la familia fue salva y cómo todavía sigue tocando las vidas. Um, pues qué privilegio, qué privilegio poder uh, presentarles la palabra del Señor y, y que todo el mundo sepa. Y como mencionaba Martita, dijo, uh, para que más personas todavía puedan seguir siendo tocadas por su vida a través de su testimonio de lo que Él hizo. Dice la palabra del Señor en San Juan, capítulo 11, en el verso uh, 24 y al 27, voy a estar uh, leyendo. Es una conversación que Jesús tuvo con uh, Marta, la hermana de Lázaro. Y Lázaro había muerto, hacía cuatro días que había muerto cuando Jesús viene y, y Marta sale donde está Jesús y le dice, uh, Señor, si hubieras estado aquí, mi hermano no hubiera muerto. Mi hermano no hubiera muerto si hubieras estado aquí. El Señor Jesús le dice en el verso 24, Marta, yo sé, Jesús le dice, yo soy la resurrección y la vida. El que cree en mí, aunque esté muerto, vivirá. En primer lugar, qué privilegio Dios nos da una promesa. Que aunque pasemos de esta vida a la otra, Dios nos da una promesa de que los que creen en Cristo, los que tienen una relación personal con Él. La Biblia dice, y Jesús lo dijo, esa es la gran promesa que aunque estemos muertos viviremos con Él. La, res la resurrección de Jesucristo de los muertos, Además de probar que Él es el Cristo, el Hijo de Dios, el ungido de Dios, además de eso, nos ha dado al mundo uh, la solución a nuestro problema que es el pecado. Y da, ha dado a los creyentes la seguridad de que todo aquel que cree en Él, aunque esté muerto, vivirá y viviremos por la eternidad. Porque Él es la promesa de Dios para sus hijos. Porque así como Cristo resucitó de entre los muertos y vive para siempre, nosotros tenemos la seguridad que viviremos también con Él. Y que Trevor no está aquí, su cuerpo está ahí, pero el Señor, él, él está con el Señor en este momento. Por la fe que Él puso en Jesús. La Biblia dice en 2 Corintios 5.11... El apóstol Pablo hablaba con esta seguridad que él tenía porque él lo había experimentado. Y decía, porque sabemos que si nuestra morada terrestre, hablando de nuestro cuerpo, este tabernáculo se deshiciere, tenemos de Dios un edificio, una casa no hecha de manos eterna en los cielos. Hoy vivimos en una tienda de campaña. Eso es nuestro cuerpo, una tienda de campaña solamente, donde nos ha tocado vivir y es Dios quien determina cuánto tiempo vamos a vivir allí. Él es el que determina el momento, Él tiene un propósito para cada uno, como decía el canto, es parte del propósito que vivamos el tiempo que Dios quiere que vivamos. Pero que logremos ese propósito, eso es lo importante Así que vivimos aquí y el Señor dice que nos asegura que aquellos que hemos puesto la confianza en Él, cuando esta, esta tienda de campaña se deshaga, tenemos no una casa, no una tienda de campaña, sino una casa eterna en los cielos. Tenemos ah, algo más que, eh, eso, eso es algo inexplicable. Jesucristo le dijo a sus discípulos no se turbe vuestro corazón 
Creer en Dios, creer también en mí, en la casa de mi padre, muchas moradas hay. Voy pues a preparar lugar para vosotros, para que donde yo estoy, ustedes también estén. ¿Qué promesa? What a promise in John 14, God gave to his disciples. ¿Qué promesa el Señor le dio a sus discípulos? Oh, mientras vivamos aquí, vivimos con fe, confiando en sus promesas. Y aún, y al ausentarnos del cuerpo, estamos presentes al Señor. La Biblia dice, en segunda de Corintios también, en el capítulo 5, dice, ausentes del cuerpo y presentes con el Señor. Ausentes del cuerpo y presentes al Señor. As soon our soul get out of the body, we are present in the Lord. Wow. What a privilege we have as of Christians. What a privilege we have to surrender our lives to Jesus at this moment. When it's time, when, when the time is still. En segundo lugar, la palabra de consuelo. Cristo le dio a Marta una palabra de consuelo. Le dijo para que los que, y, y lo hizo para que los que quedamos aquí, para nosotros, lo que quedamos aquí todavía, esta es, esta es una esperanza, una, una esperanza gloriosa, una esperanza bienaventurada. La esperanza de que algún día nos volveremos a encontrar. That's the hope. The one day we're going to be together forever. Es el consuelo que tenemos un día de que y nada nos podrá separar del amor de Dios. Dice la palabra de Dios. En primera de Tesalonicenses, First Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 4, dice la palabra de Dios en primera de Tesalonicenses, capítulo 4, aunque ahí habla de la venida del Señor, pero mire lo que dice Dios, familia, amigos, mire lo que dice Dios. Tampoco queremos, hermanos, que ignoréis acerca de los que duermen. El Señor dice que están dormidos. Están dormidos en Jesús. No queremos que ignoren, no queremos que, que no sepan. No queremos que ignoren acerca de los que duermen. Y la razón es por esta. Para que no os entristezcáis como los otros que no tienen esperanza. There are some people that they, they have no hope. No hope. They have no hope. But we have hope in Jesus. No queremos que ignores. Que los que hemos creído en Cristo, hay, tenemos una esperanza. No os entristezcáis como los otros. There's two classes of people. Those that uh, believe and trust in Jesus and those that they don't know. They don't know Jesus. They don't have a relationship with him. Those They trust in Jesus. They have hope. God gave us hope. And Él promete que estará con nosotros. He promised that He go, is, going, is going to stay with us during these hard times because it's hard. But the Lord is, His promises are there. Sus promesas están allí. Dice, porque si creemos que Jesús murió, la razón es esta. This is the reason, uh, verse 14. Esta es la razón, porque si creemos que Jesús murió y resucitó, así también traerá Dios con Jesús a los que durmieron en Él. Por lo cual os decimos esto en palabra del Señor. Que nosotros que vivimos, que habremos quedado hasta la venida del Señor, no nos vamos a adelantar a los que durmieron. Porque el Señor mismo con voz de mando, con voz de arcángel y con trompeta de Dios descenderá del cielo. Y los muertos en Cristo resucitarán primero. Luego nosotros los que vivimos, los que habremos quedado, seremos arrebatados juntamente con ellos en las nubes para recibir al Señor en el aire. Y así estaremos siempre con el Señor. Qué aliento. El verso 18 dice, por tanto, alentados los unos a los otros con estas palabras. Encourage each other with these words. Alentados los unos a los otros con estas palabras. 
Y por último, en tercer lugar, una Dios nos, ya, nos da, Cristo le dio una invitación a aquellos, una invitación a creer en Cristo, a the end. En tercer lugar, God make an invitation a creer en Cristo y su verdad. To believe in Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. Él es la vida. Y Dios nos hace una invitación. Cuando Dios creó al hombre, en el huerto del Edén lo creó perfecto. Lo creó santo, sin pecado. Pero lo creó con libre albedrío, con una voluntad propia para que decidiera qué es lo que iba a hacer. El hombre decidió separarse de Dios. When God created Adam and Eve, and he put them on the garden of Eden, but he gave them the opportunity to decide what to do. Obey him or reject him. The man decided to reject Jesus. I mean, God. And the sin came into the world. Y el pecado vino al mundo. Pero gracias a Dios, que Dios nos hace una invitación. God promised that time that he would send a savior. Dios prometió en ese tiempo que enviaría a un salvador. And that, that is the invitation that God is making to all of us today. If you don't know Jesus as your savior, you need to think about very serious about this. Si usted no conoce a Jesucristo como su salvador en este momento, tiene que pensar seriamente because one day God is going to call Everybody, everybody of us. That's for sure. Eso es por seguro. So Dios nos hace una invitación a venir a Él. God provide. Dios proveyó. Dios proveyó lo que el ser humano necesita. Él proveyó lo que nosotros necesitamos. Para restablecer nuestra comunión con Él. La Biblia dice porque no hay justo ni a un uno. El hombre no puede solo. Familia que no conoces a Jesús. Amigos que no conocen a Jesús. Esta es una de las cosas por las cuales estoy. Tengo el privilegio de estar aquí en esta tarde. Me han pedido. Según el corazón de este joven, era que todo el mundo sepa, que todo el mundo conozca, que tenga una relación personal con Jesucristo. Si tú no conoces a Jesús, esa es la invitación que en este momento se te está haciendo. Cristal me decía, y Gabriel, él siempre quiso eso. Así que... No podemos por nosotros mismos porque la Biblia dice que no hay justo ni aún uno. Por cuanto todos pecaron y están destituidos de la gloria de Dios. Dios proveyó el camino. Everybody knows that uh, verse, John 3:16. ¿Qué hay allí? What is there? Love. The love of God. God loves the world. The gay his only son to die for us that is the invitation esa es la invitación porque de tal manera amó Dios al mundo que ha dado a su hijo unigénito y escúcheme para que todo aquel que en él cree no se pierda mas tenga vida eterna whosoever believes in him do not perish but have everlasting life do you know Jesus? Do you have a good relationship with Jesus? He, is he just your savior? Your faith is in him? ¿Has, has confiado en Jesucristo como tu salvador personal? ¿Tu fe está en él? Si Dios te llamara hoy, 
¿Dónde estaría tu alma? ¿A dónde iría? La Biblia dice en Juan, 1 Juan 5, 21, el que tiene al Hijo tiene la vida. Pero el que rehúsa creer en el Hijo no verá la vida, sino que la ira de Dios está sobre él. La palabra de Dios es muy clara. Mi pregunta para usted es esta. My last question for you is this. Do you know Jesus? One more time. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? If you don't, why don't you do it today? Do it today. He's calling you. He's making the invitation to you to come. And he promised that he will be save you. He's going to save you. Te va, te va a salvar. Así que, el que tiene al Hijo tiene la vida. Dios dio a su Hijo para morir por ti y por mí. Es una invitación a creer. ¿Lo creerás? El que tiene al Hijo, el Señor promete que le dará la vida. Amigos, compañeros, familia. Qué privilegio saber conocer a Jesucristo a través de la vida de Trevor qué privilegio yo creo que estaremos por siempre la familia estará por siempre agradecida a Dios por la vida de él por ese corazón grande que él tenía que él, un corazón grande que Dios le dio para amar para preocuparse por los demás. What a privilege we have as a Christians. There's nothing better than that. I'm going to ask you, let's give thanks to the Lord for his life and let's pray too. If you don't know Jesus, you can do it today. Just bow your heads and say, Lord, Si usted no conoce a Jesucristo en esta tarde, todo lo que tiene que hacer es decirle, Señor, en este momento, háblele a Dios en sus propias palabras. Talk to God in your own words. Say, Lord, I know you, that you died for me. You came to the cross and died for me. You gave your life for me. I receive you as my Savior and Lord. I surrender my life to you today. Please save me, Lord. Si usted no conoce a Jesucristo en esta tarde, este es el momento para que le diga a Dios, hoy rindo mi vida a ti, sálvame, Señor. Y Padre, en este momento te pedimos por la familia que tú les continúes fortaleciendo. Gracias por tu palabra. Gracias por el mensaje de seguridad, Señor, de que tú estarás con ellos. Que tu diestra está con ellos. De que tú les continuarás ayudando. Tu palabra dice en Isaías 43 que cuando pases por las aguas. Cuando pases por el fuego. Cuando pases por los ríos. No te abnegarán ni la llama arderá en ti. Porque el Señor dice soy tu salvador. Gracias Señor. Gracias te damos Señor en esta hora. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Dios les bendiga. Como si fuera mi último día, voy a vivir en la vida. Amando sincero, mostrando a los míos cuánto los quiero. Como si fuera mi último día, voy a luchar por mis sueños, viviendo sin miedo y cada minuto vivirlo intenso. No voy a esperar a 
hasta el mañana Si el presente lo tengo Como si no hubiese tiempo Me quedara un momento Voy a mostrar que te amo Que soy contento Que te tengo Como si tu alegría depende de mí Voy a darlo todo por ti Y voy a hacer de ese día el mejor Que pueda vivir Como si fuera mi único chance para mirarte de nuevo haré del momento el más importante de tu recuerdo en el estrés de la vida se nos escapan detalles que luego más adelante lamentamos Olvidarse Y a veces se hace difícil O imposible Recuperarles Como si no hubiese tiempo Me quedara un momento Voy a mostrar que te amo Que soy contento Que te tengo si tu alegría depende de mí Voy a darlo todo por ti Y voy a hacer de ese día el mejor Que pueda vivir Disfrutar todo aquello que Dios me brindó Mis amigos, familia y amor Y voy a hacer de ese día mejor que pueda vivir y voy a ser de ese día el mejor que pueda vivir One more thing if you can hang just a Another couple of minutes. I want to talk to you about something that I absolutely know positively for sure that Trevor would talk to you about today, if he could. We've talked a lot about hope and how we can have hope, and sometimes it seems like in a situation like this, how in the world can there be hope? But I want to go back to Trevor's childhood for just a minute. When Trevor and Cole were in Awana, which was a kids' discipleship program, one of the things that they would do would be to learn Bible verses. And when Trevor and Cole were learning their Bible verses, they would come home and they'd have Papa listen to their Bible verses and let Papa sign off on their Bible verses so that they would be ready to be signed off on a Wednesday night. And Papa would come and he would listen to the Oana verses that Trevor and Cole would tell him. And Papa wasn't a follower of Jesus yet. And he would listen and he would listen and he would listen. And Trevor would say, Papa, don't you want to be in heaven with us? And Trevor would say, Papa, don't you want us all to be in heaven together? In seven years, so made the choice to be a follower of Jesus. Gabby made that choice as well. Nanny after school would babysit the boys. And the boys would do their homework with Nanny. And they'd do their Awana homework with Nanny. And she'd listen to their spelling words, I guess, and watch them do their math problems, I guess. But she would also listen to them say their Awana verses, and Nanny was not a follower of Jesus. And they would say their Awana verses to Nanny, and Trevor would say, Nanny, don't you want to go to church with us? Nanny, don't you want us all to be in heaven together? You see, Trevor wanted the people that he loved to be together all the time. And that leads us to where we are right now. A child is bold. They don't have a lot of inhibitions. But then when we get older, the older we get, the more inhibited we get, and the less we say about the things that are really, really important to us. 
And I don't know if Trevor asked you. Carly told me that kind of Trevor learned the rules about how bold to be. But there were always conversations going on in the background. I don't know if Trevor ever asked you, but I absolutely know that today, because he is experiencing heaven, and because the Bible tells us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, so Trevor is present with the Lord, that he would not want to miss this opportunity to say to you, don't you want to be in heaven with me? Don't you want to be in heaven with us? Whether he asks you straight out or not, he would be asking you straight out right now. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, that God plants eternity in the hearts of people. And maybe you would feel like, well, I've really never thought about eternity before. I'm just kind of living my life. God's word says he plants eternity in our hearts. We know that there's something more beyond right now. Maybe you have thought about it. Maybe you say, of course I'll go to heaven. I've been to church. Or, of course I'll go to heaven. I've been to Trevor's worship, his service, his, his celebration service. Or, of course I'll go to heaven. My grandma believes in Jesus, so I'm in, right? Or, of course I'm going to go to heaven. I'm a pretty good person. Or, of course I'm going to go to heaven. I'm better than a lot of people. But none of those things are the things that gets you to heaven. We've talked so much today about Trevor's gigantic personality, but Trevor's not in heaven because of his gigantic personality. We've talked a lot about what a great Publix employee he is, but he's not in heaven because he's a great Publix employee. We've talked about what a great friend he is, and we've talked about what a great mentor he is, we've talked about what a great big brother he is, but he's not in heaven because of those things. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, God, for by grace you've been saved through faith, and it's not of yourselves. Salvation is not a reward of good works, good things that we've done because then we could brag about it. If Trevor was in heaven because of what a great guy he was, he could brag about it all day long. But God's word says, no, 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 no. It's by grace that you're saved through faith. So let's talk about just a minute what Trevor knew and understood. Trevor learned when he was a young boy that he was a sinner. That sounds really harsh. How can you say a young boy is a sinner? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever tried to do everything just right? How'd that work out for you? You see, we're born sinners. Because of what Pastor Adrian just said about Adam and Eve sitting in the Garden of Eden, we are born sinners, and, and Trevor knew that. The Bible says everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Sin is anything that we do that's disobedience to God. It's not doing what God tells us so that we should do, and it's doing what God tells us not to do. Isaiah 59, 2 says it's your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he's turned away. And that might sound harsh, too. Like, what? I've heard all the time that God is love. How can he turn away from me? We see the difference, the contrast between us and God is that we are sinners, but God is holy. He has no sin. And as much as he loves us, he cannot be around our sin. But there's some really good news. Romans 6.23 says the wages, the payment of sin is death, to be forever separated from God. But there's really great news here in the rest of this verse. But the free, free, doesn't cost us anything, but it costs a lot. The free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Pastor Adrian just recited to you John 3, 16, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so, so that whoever believes in him won't perish but would have eternal life. That's what Trevor's experiencing right now. Because Trevor put his faith and trust in Jesus. Crystal said to me on Friday, I want everyone there to know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus said it in John 14, 6. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. 
That sounds pretty much like a non-negotiable to me. Romans 5, 8 says, God showed his great love for us. Another translation says, God proved his love for us. And that even while we were sinners, Christ died for us. See, the great news is you don't have to get it all together before you put your faith and trust in Jesus. You don't have to clean up your act before you put your faith and trust in Jesus. All you have to do is understand that even while we were sinners, Christ died for us. But Jesus didn't die on the cross only. Billy talked a while back about Sunday and what Sunday brought. And Sunday brought the resurrection. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Trevor's living even after dying. Because Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus defeated death. Death has no victory. The Bible says death has no sting. And we feel hurt because Trevor is not with us right now. But we can have incredible hope because Trevor is not lost. Trevor is in heaven, experiencing eternal life for longer than we can ever, ever imagine. And again, Trevor would say, don't you want to be in heaven with me? Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. And then verse 13 says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So it's simple. Think about Trevor and how much you love him. But then think about this. The most important thing that he would want to know is, don't you want to be in heaven with me? And you can't get to heaven by being a great guy like Trevor. And you can't get to heaven like by being the best employee. And you can't get to heaven by doing all the good things that you talked about that Trevor have done. The only way you can get to heaven is to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. To put your faith and trust in Jesus. And you might say, I don't have a clue how to do that. Let me tell you this, there's nothing magic about words because what God hears is basically the position of your heart. All you have to do is tell him, God, I know that I sin. I can't get it right. But Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for being willing to take my punishment. Jesus, if you hadn't done that, I would be forever lost. Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want to turn from my sin. And Jesus, I want you to come into my life and forgive my sin. And I want to follow you for the rest of my life. And that's all it takes. Again, you don't have to get it together to give your life to Jesus. No matter how old you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter who you are. All you have to do is trust Jesus like Trevor did as a young boy. Many of you may say, okay, I, I, I believe you. I, I need to figure out more about how I can make this choice to follow Jesus. The guys that have been up here today on the stage will be over there. They'd be happy to talk with you about that if you'd like to talk further about that. That's what matters most. That's what would matter most to Trevor. That's what matters most to this family is that you would, I'll quote Crystal, that you would know that you know that you know that you know that you would spend eternity in heaven no matter what you've done, but because of what Jesus has done for you, that you could spend eternity with him, him in heaven. Family, we want you to know that we love you so much.
We're here for you, no matter what. And I want to pray. God, thank you so much for Trevor's life. God, thank you that more than anything, Trevor knew you. And that because of that, we have the hope of knowing that he's alive. That even though he dies, he lives. And he lives in heaven with you. God, I pray for the people in this room. And I pray, God, that if there are people here that don't know you personally like Trevor did, God, I pray that you would work in their hearts, that they would make that choice to be a follower of Jesus like we've seen and heard of Trevor's family doing many times because of his invitation. God, thank you for what you did by sending your son Jesus to die on the cross. Thank you that we don't have to get it all together before Jesus was willing to die for us. Thank you that he not only died, but he rose from the dead. And because of that, he defeated death. And that because of that, there can be eternal life in heaven with Jesus after we die. God, I pray for this family. Would you love on them? Would you comfort them? Would you give them peace? Would you give them strength in the days ahead? God, would you give them everything that they need? God, would you be near to them? You tell us, God, that you are near the brokenhearted. Would you be near to them? Thank you for this time of celebration today. God, we pray that you've been honored. We pray that Trevor's been honored. And God, we pray that this family has been comforted and encouraged. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.